crackberry.com. Hey everybody, Kevin here for crackberry.com. We're at Blackberry World 2011 and we're about to enter the QNX Corvette. Or is it QNX, Mike? QNX. QNX Corvette with a proof of concept entertainment system. Use yeah, all built on QNX. Awesome. Let's get this. We have our tour guide here. Andrew, you're going to walk us through it? You betcha. All right. Oh, baby. Oh, ho, ho. you sit low in these things. Yes, you wow. do. All right, so we got all a right. big display. Yes. Okay, so the concept we're showing here is really, Kinex uh, really has this concept of a connected car, where the connected car is connected both into different nodes within the vehicle, connected to consumer devices, and connected to off-board content and services, or if you want to say the cloud, okay? okay. So what we've got here is we're actually uh, showing that off. We're running a couple different uh, uh, devices in the car. We're running a reconfigurable instrument cluster. Uh, infotainment or entertainment system, and then that's integrating both into a couple of consumer devices, including the the playbook. Right on. All right. So maybe if you want to take a look here, and and actually I should maybe say the the concept behind this was that um, we launched this to really accelerate the development schedules for tier ones and OEMs to launch new products in the market. We started in automotive 10 years ago. That The average time back then would take up to four years to go from concept to a production system. Now with all this pre-integration that we've done by integrating our OS, our middleware, our um, echo and noise cancellation, our media player, now we've taken that to as short as about 14 months. So if you look at the new GM MyLink that was just announced, that system came together extremely quick and it's got a lot of really cool functionality and it was based on a lot of the, the platform components I'm going to show you. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so what we have here, we have a, a full an HMI built on Adobe Flash. We're running a couple concepts where you can go, oh sorry, I'm on the home screen, but we have a couple sections here and really this is a reference implementation that somebody would customize for their own look and feel. So we've got a couple things. We've got um, an internet setting, and a lot of these things you obviously wouldn't do while driving, but right. just conceptualize, where we're showing a couple things, everything from a full browser to running internet radio like Pandora, but also showing the flexibility of the system that you can also run uh, technology like Pandora Link, where you choose if the car has a data connection built in, you run Pandora natively. If the car wants to use the phone's uh, data connection and the Pandora application running in the phone, hmm. you can use Pandora Link, where it'll actually interact with the device's Pandora application, allow command and control over Bluetooth, and then have the album art shift into the vehicle. It's really smart. Yeah, so it gives you flexibility, and that's really, every tier one will want to scale these systems from a low end to a high end, and it gives that kind of flexibility. So, you know, a couple of sample applications, and uh, because we're indoors and we don't have GPS, we ran this car around with the GPS and recorded the, the <laughs> right. GPS signal. So it's in Ottawa, where our headquarters is outside of Canada, so obviously we're not in Florida and having snow and rain and yeah, yucky understood. weather. <laughs> um, so we've got a couple different applications, like the weather application. Um, we also have some local search, where we actually integrated it just conceptually into Google Maps Mobile so you can actually look for a couple different pieces. Typically in production, they have, most of the car companies have their own favorite navigation vendor. Right. Um, but again, you can see the little carrot rolling around, showing where the GPS would go. Um, we also have, in the multimedia, um, oh, let's just go to Pandora. So we'll uh, hope, hopefully, I, they gave away a lot of playbooks here at the show, and they everyone's did. pinging the internet, so I, yeah, uh, fingers crossed we actually have an internet connection. This is a really powerful framework, obviously, and with a lot of customization available to, to the manufacturers themselves. Yeah. Now, would, yeah, they set, would they typically tell you what they want and you build it, or do they take it from here and do the finishing touches? Typically, what we started doing a few years ago is we launched this connected automotive reference where we give them this entire stack on a, on a hardware platform okay. and let them start from that, and then they take that and bring it, uh, customize it for production. So Cunix has been used now in over 20 million vehicles, uh, over 200 different vehicle models, and this year we'll launch in about six to eight million cars. Wow. So all kinds of branded electronics from OnStar, including the aftermarket OnStar and OnStar China, uh, the Audi um, MMI 3G that also, in, uh, they've announced they show Google Earth, 
Uh, we're in instrument clusters. If you get a chance, go over and take a look at the Jaguar in the corner. That, yeah, that one, and I guess the full-size Range Rover this year has exactly. that cluster. Exactly. Yeah, really and, cool. and it's nice because it actually configures, so when you put it in four-wheel drive, uh, the Range Rover actually shows the pitch and yawn, a little 3D representation in the dash. Awesome. The Jaguar has a race mode that changes the way the tack works based on putting in the race mode. So they're just... And you guys got a display on this one too here? Yes. So we are also showing a reconfigurable cluster again. We put it in a demo mode so we can actually show it and have the needles uh, moving it. Right. But it actually does work. When we take it out of demo mode, we can drive it around and actually show everything uh, functioning. That's awesome. Yep. Um, so how does it work with my uh, the device integration here, hooking okay. up a playbook and everything else? Sure, I, I will show you one other thing sure, yeah, absolutely. real quick before we get there. So if we're running some sort of music, and I'll play it loud enough that maybe you can kind of hear it. Let me know if I need it. Yeah. Um, but we included a couple even kind of fun sample apps, like when you're in the car setting, you can go into audio control. And in this, instead of a traditional balance and fade, you know, you can bring it across and then uh, oh, wow. allow balance and fade like that. You can click it in the, oops, didn't click it right, click it in the middle and balance it that way. Um, you know, we also have some, I'll just mute it besides that. Um, and then I'll get to the playbook integration here. But basically, in the my car setting, we do have a couple others I'll get to before I get to the playbook integration. Yep. One is this whole concept of a virtual mechanic. So if you'd imagine, there's also a lot of um, OEMs pay quite a bit when you bring a car into the dealership while it's currently under warranty. So often it's very nice to have something that could tell an end user if it's a simple problem like your tire pressure is low, make it very clear and very easy to identify and not have to bring that vehicle in the dealership that can cost an OEM. 30 to $65 for that, that bring back, even if it might be something simple. Right. So we have this concept, we're showing off a virtual mechanic, and again, not only will it tell you some things like, okay, fluid levels, it's telling you there's a warning that there's a fluid level low. You can click on it and it can tell you exactly the reservoir you're looking at. <laughs> awesome. So that way you know you're not fumbling around trying to figure out where. And if it does get something that's a little more tricky conceptually, we, we show a couple of garages nearby, show you the distance. If it's something critical, you can go straight in. Love it. Okay, now we wanted to get into the playbook integration. So this is where we get almost all the stuff I just showed you are things that uh, OEMs and their suppliers are actually building into production systems today. Uh, they're using all this technology that I just showed you. We wanted to conceptualize what can you do as you start bringing consumer devices in. So one of the things we're showing here is uh, a concept of running an application in the playbook that's actually an HVAC application that's mirrored into the head unit and actually allows command and control of the climate control oh. in the car as well. So as you can see, you know, it's just a standard playbook app, but you can actually adjust the settings in the playbook app and also adjust, have it smart wireless. Dream come connected. true, getting really close. Exactly, yeah. So another maybe concept could be you have the mirror here, and I don't know, I have kids, uh, I just know sometimes you hear somebody choking in the back seat, and do you turn around or maybe you have a camera in here and it can show a small window somewhere in the car and say, oh, well, my kid's okay, I can see him with the, the nanny cam in the back, right? right so right, this right. whole level of integration of these kind of devices in the car is really coming. Very cool. Yep. Totally. And this can, so when this interfaces with that system, how yep. is that working? Is it QNX talking to QNX? Is yes. It, okay, so it's not something easily replicable by other platforms. Well, there's other ways you could do it, but the simplicity of running a QNX system to a QNX system really makes it just an ideal interface. Okay. But we're also demonstrating we connect in automotive to a variety of other devices. So, okay. you know, one other thing, your iPod, we did this with BMW, probably you saw um, in their launch, but there's this whole concept of, uh, sorry, it's coming in in one second. Uh, whole concept of iPod out. So this is where the iPods uh, in BMW, if you've seen this, they actually duplicate an iPod display. You can go through, see albums, you know, on the album art. So we continue to also make sure to integrate with a variety of different consumer devices. Um, but the tightness of the integration to actually have a playbook tie into a factory system and have transparent command and control, and real tight integration in the car is something that a lot of the OEMs are looking for, especially as they drive new consumer technologies into the vehicle um, and want to do it faster. Awesome. Yep. This is uh, future. I love it. <laughs>
And the other fun thing is, uh, this system we launched, the Kinex Connected Automotive Reference two years ago, we'll be rolling four new automotive uh, software stacks that will be based, based on a lot of the same technology that's in the playbook, while the, the current platform's based on flashlight and um, HTML, but not HTML5. You can imagine as we roll in HTML5, Air, Flash, just the user experience that they'll be able to anticipate actually building into the vehicle will become really exciting as well. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Great. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Thank Appreciate you. Your time. Yep.